everyone, welcome back to my shop. Last summer I got some logs from a lady who was clearing some land to build a new house. I told her that when the slabs were dry, I'd make her something. So that time has come, and I'm going to make her a coffee table. I'm trying to decide between these two slabs. I'm leaning towards this one because it has more of where the trunk splits. Uh, they both have nice crotch figuring, but there's more of the branch or trunk left here and I'd like to integrate that into the table but I will be cutting the live edge off of this side it's already cut off of this side this this trunk was so big I couldn't fit it onto my sawmill and go through it and have live edge on both sides so I had to cut one side off unfortunately on the back side it was hacked away pretty well by the chainsaw but I think maybe I can integrate that into a detail so I think I'm going to go with this one Now normally I would use a slab flattening jig and my plunge router, but uh, at the moment I lent out my plunge router, so it's going to have to be the CNC. It's a little bit slower, but it still gets the job done. There's lots of little voids and cracks to fill, so I'm using Total Boat uh, Tabletop Epoxy, which is pretty good for doing these little cracks, and I just colored it black with some mica powder. And for now, I'm going to leave the live edge because I can always cut it off later, but it's hard to add it back. I'm going to take this outside and give it a bit of shape. I'm going to do the tapering. I have a cuts all disc that goes on my grinder. I've never used one before, so uh, we'll see how that goes. But I need to do some layout marks. I was using the turquoise cuts all disc and I measured, I was taking off basically a half inch of material off the bottom tapered back to two and a half inches. And if I was doing any more than that, I think I would have gone for the more aggressive disc, which I think is the black one. But uh, that one worked out okay. Uh, I'm going to scrape some of this epoxy off and just get the rest of this uh, flattened. Uh, here at where it goes off into the trunk, or I guess that's the trunk, where it goes off into the branches.
lots of sanding in my future. Um, whoop, that. Well, I've been doing a lot of sanding. I started out with 80 grit on the machine marks from the CNC. Uh, it was harder than I hoped it would be to get uh, all those machine marks out of the the figured area from the crotch. And I think that's because you've got those two big branches there and they're always kind of flexing and that makes that crotch area very hard. And so it was difficult to get the machine marks out. I used uh, water in a spray bottle and water popped it several times uh, which raises the grain and uh, hopefully that will take care of it. I used my die grinder to clean out the area there by the V of the crotch. Oh my god, the V of the crotch. <laughs> Stop saying crotch. Um, <laughs> been working my way up through the grits. Uh, I started at 80. I'm at 180 now and I'm about to do the final sanding. I've got a couple repairs to make. Uh, I've got uh, one little hole to fill and I've got some cracks to do. I had a knot that uh, was a larger one that the CA glue wasn't going to work, so I used a burn-in stick. And uh, I never used one of those before, but uh, we'll see how it looks. That's the one coat of Rubio. Uh, I like Rubio because it is a one and done finish, although I will add the maintenance oil in three days and that just bumps up the sheen a little bit. Right now it's flat and then that will give it like a satin finish and a bit more depth. Um, but you put the Rubio on, wait 15 minutes and you just wipe it off. I will leave it at that and then uh, tomorrow I'll start thinking about legs. I was going through the internet looking for ideas for the table legs and uh, I like the trapezoid shape, so I made a form with my CNC and I laminated these together. They're three pieces thick, uh, it's just under three inches thick, and I thought I would uh, shape it with the, uh, the cuts all disc and paint them black. But uh, I kind of missed the point there because this table is going to a lady who gave me the logs uh, a year ago. Uh, when she's clearing land for a, for a new house that she's building. So I really should make it out of the same wood I got from her. These are made out of red oak. I didn't get them from her. I think these would work if I carved them up and everything, but uh, yeah, these are, uh, might go on something else, but not this. I'm gonna keep it really simple. And I've gone with this type of design. And I've actually, Started out at a 45 degree angle, which uh, you would think would be okay, uh, but it, it's too much or not enough of a steep angle. Uh, so this one is 60 degrees and it's not quite far enough yet. Uh, so I did settle upon 70 degrees. So that's where we're going. So I made this as a bit of a template and also just to get a, a visual. Uh, but I did that just on the, my outfeed table here, just laying it out with tape uh, and just getting a visual for what it looks like. So last night I milled up a whole bunch of walnut, and this morning I'm going to start putting them together. I really wanted the simplest legs possible, and I thought if I had maybe even round legs going up would be uh, the best. But I've got a, a lathe, but I'm terrified of it. So... Uh, so we're going to have to go with tapered legs.
It only took about four tries, but I got better in the end. I'm going to use a round over bit on the router. I just want to break the edges a bit. I'm here at the table saw. I've got my fence set to 16 inches. So I'm going to cut the uh, table legs to height and that will also put the correct angle on them. And uh, I really should have done this before I used the roundover bit. So if there's any uh, tear out as it goes through the blade, that would have been taken care of by the roundover bit. My hand cut dovetails are not so good, so I'm using some power tools. The tails for the cross pieces, I used my table router and then I laid them out on the individual legs. Of course, I screwed up there too because I laid out one side and then I turned the piece 180 degrees and laid out the second one with the cross piece going in the same direction. So one would have gone that way, one would have gone that way. So uh, luckily I caught it in time. Thank <laughs> you. 
If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button, comment, subscribe, better yet, do all three. I put the maintenance oil on this morning at 5.30 in the morning. It's been sitting all day long. It's had about 15 hours to dry now. It's nine o'clock at night, and I have not touched the camera, the lights, or anything. And I just want to show you the difference with a split screen between the Oil Plus 2C, the Pure, which is what I used, and the addition of the, the maintenance oil. Uh, it makes quite a big difference. Um, I know a lot of people like to add a second coat of the Oil Plus 2C, but I think it's more expensive to do it that way. The maintenance oil is cheaper and it's as the manufacturer intended. So um, you can see there's quite a big difference. It's always nice to work with a nice bit of figures walnut. Um, I waffled around on the legs, went through several different versions before I was happy with them. But in the end, very happy with the table. I think it looks great, and I think the new owner will be very happy with it. Thanks for watching, though. Hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time.